Welcome back to The Art of Adventure. This is episode 180 with Jackie Nurse. The Art of Adventure is the podcast that helps you travel the world, run your business, and embark on an epic quest. I'm your host, lead explorer and guide, Derek Loudermilk. You can go to DerekLoudermilk.com to check out the show notes for this episode and all other episodes. And while you're there, go ahead and grab your copy of the top 10 ways to make money online while traveling the world, a PDF with a bunch of links that I put together for you guys. Today's guest is Jackie Nurse, also known as Traveling Jackie and the Budget-Minded Traveler. And we, we have some really interesting overlap. We were both living in Bozeman, Montana at the same time, but we didn't meet there and we've, we've known about each other for a couple of years, but we finally connected in person in Mexico in February. We did a couple of days of, of co-working together. We both happened to be there at the same time in Baja. And then I was a guest on her podcast with Hayden Lee. So finally, she is coming on this show. So today we are going to learn from Jackie how she navigates and approaches having those two different brands, the budget-minded traveler and traveling Jackie, and how she is both of them, and but how, how it's evolved for her over the years. Uh, we'll talk specifics, how much money she makes from her website and, and her businesses and how she uses SEO to, to drive that business. Uh, we'll talk about how she runs her adventure events in Patagonia, which is, which is coming up. And we also talk about how she runs her Facebook community, the Budget Minded Traveler community, and why she bothers doing that. Plus, uh, this is very timely because it's happening right now, but she gives some great tips on Oktoberfest. And if you happen to be heading there, that's in the next couple of weeks. That's still going on. So this is a very full travel and business-friendly episode. Lots of great stories. I know you're going to love Jackie. So without further ado, here she is, Jackie Nurse. Welcome back to the Art of Adventure. Today I have Jackie Nurse on the show. Welcome to the show, Jackie. What's up? Thanks, Derek. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, and this is a long, long-awaited episode. We, uh, I was on your show back in March, maybe, and mm, yeah, February or March sure. with with <laughs> Hayden Lee. Can't go with that. Yeah, and uh, then we met up in Cabo in Mexico. That was really fun. Yeah. It's kind of, yes. you know, I'm having more and more of these these things where it's like I'll be sort of sort of friends with someone online, and I'll say, "Hey, I'm going to this place," and they're like, "I'm going to be there tomorrow." Also, let's meet up, and it's like, okay, I have to do it because, uh, <laughs> you yep. know, that it's, it's so silly not to. I uh, totally understand. Yeah, you know what's funny about that is in our episode that you were on my show, that was like the game show, super fun. Yeah. And one of the, do you remember one of the questions we got was, or maybe it was one of, I feel like you asked this question. Maybe it was one of the questions that we that we randomly got though that was asking if uh, we ever meet people like on purpose that we didn't know before traveling. I didn't say that very well, but not like run into people and meet them on the road like strangers. But people that you actually know that you're trying to meet up on the road or that you get connected by by others. And I uh, I was struggling to even just come up with what, even though that's happened to me so many times, I was struggling to come up with an example during the show. And now I keep thinking about that because it's happened to me so many times since then, where I've specifically gone to meet somebody I already knew only online, you know, or was connected to someone. Um, Have you ever gone to meet someone happening. that you wanted to learn something from, like a... Uh, you're like, I'm going to this person to have them be my guru or anything like that? Uh, well, I sort of did that with you in Baja. I mean, I wasn't planning on staying in Cabo at all. And uh, and then you said, you know, you're going to be there. I'm like, you know what? Let's go and mastermind for a few days. So that was very purposeful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was fun. Um, and I, I think that that may have been the first time that I did did like a specific business meetup. Um, and it's, it's something that I want to work in more of my travels, you mm -hmm. know, so, so our mutual friend Laden, when 
I was in Croatia, he flew down from London and we spent a week, he stayed in my house and we recorded uh, an entire video course. We, we figured out the topic, we scripted the whole thing and recorded it all in a week, just like nonstop. It was crazy. Was it fun? It was, it was really fun. <laughs> yeah, cool. it was amazing. That uh, is fun. It's like startup weekend, startup week. Yes. Video course Yeah, week. exactly. Yeah. yeah. You just That's set aside cool. everything and do one thing for a little bit. I love it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, so for the listener, Jack and I, Jackie and I have some, some cool parallels. You're in Bozeman right now. I am. Bozeman, Montana, for those of you who don't know what Bozeman is. <laughs> it's one of the largest cities in Montana. Well, at 35,000, that's, uh, <laughs> that's, it doesn't take much, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's say, let's say 2013, 2000, uh, we were probably both there in 2013, but we didn't know each other. Mm-hmm. And, uh, we both started traveling the world about the same time, 2014, if I'm correct. Uh, well, not necessarily. I mean, I've, I've been traveling for like ever, but I did well, take off in 2015, like nomadically. That's the first time I've gone nomadic, but I've been traveling since I was like 18, a lot, multiple months on end out of country. So maybe that's just the, the, the pre-life that you didn't know about, but right. Yeah. yeah so, you but know, I've been on the road for a couple of years now. Yeah. Every, every world traveler, you know, or not everyone, but to, to be a really experienced traveler, like you had to be doing this your whole life. So you do have, you do have a ton of experience and your, your two, your two sites, budget minded traveler and Mm -hmm. traveling Jackie. Uh, Mm -hmm. I'm interested. Why, why do you have two brands? Like, why did you separate them? It's such a good question. The budget minded traveler was the first one that I started and that was built for a purpose Uh, Its purpose is to really show people that no matter who you are or what your income is, you can travel. And here's proof because I can do it. And if I can do it, you can do it. I mean, the first year that I started that blog, I think uh, between my ex and I, we made $30,000 total. And we I went to 13 countries that year. And so it was a great, you know, example to use to just say, you know, here's how you do it. And I just filled that website full of really practical information. And that's what it completely excels at. Um, but you know, as we grow and change and I've been traveling for since I was like 18 really. And so, you know, my style has changed a bit and the things that I'm doing have changed a bit. My opportunities, my work opportunities. I mean, that was the, when I first started the blog, you know, getting into the blogging world, Um, I put everything into the budget minded traveler and, you know, then I started getting sponsorship trips and other things and just kind of branching beyond, uh, what, what fits in the box of the budget minded traveler. And that site works so well. And the SEO is so good that I really didn't want to mess with it, but I really wanted another creative outlet where I could just kind of write whatever, do whatever without any sort of pressure on it. Um, to fit, to be right, to 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 go with the theme, you know, of the budget minded traveler, and so that's when traveling Jackie was born, and that's the same year that I took off nomadically, and so that blog has turned into sort of the exploration of solo female travel and uh, personal development, as it has to do with travel as a tool, sort of, and adventure travel, because that's really become my style of travel is like trying new things and, you know, hiking and trekking and rafting and like all the things. And, and so I sort of use traveling Jackie as just my outlet for whatever I want for me to be creative. Cause I need that outlet, you know, and then the budget minded traveler is more the, the SEO machine. That's the one that has, um, you know, a lot of traffic, the big community, the podcast, all of that stuff. Um, but it definitely fits in a box, you know, it definitely has, it has very set boundaries. And so basically traveling Jackie is everything outside of those boundaries that I just need to have in my life. <laughs> mm, okay, cool. Yeah. Cause I was sort of, you know, you have different components. You have that Facebook community, which, um, we may talk a little bit, a little bit about the, the podcast, budget minded traveler podcast, mm-hmm. uh, two, two blogs and, you know, social media accounts for each one. Mm-hmm. So how are you deciding, you know, which one I, you know, does it, if it fits the criteria, it goes in budget minded traveler. How do you decide what goes where? So 
Traveling Jackie is more me, you know, like uh, Traveling Jackie is the founder of the Budget Minded Traveler. And so it allows me to have my personal space online as well, because I was only the Budget Minded Traveler for a long time. And it felt strange to, you know, post a picture of a craft beer that I really love because it just doesn't it doesn't really fit. Like I don't know. I don't write about beer on the Budget Minded Traveler, but it is something that I've written about on Traveling Jackie. You know, like it's it's kind of it separates the personal from from what works with my brand, with the budget minded traveler brand. Mm. Um, and so like the social media accounts are actually geared more towards my, the traveling Jackie is me. That's, that's just me. Uh, but the budget minded traveler is mostly community. So it's a, it's a community Instagram. Uh, it's a community Facebook group, you know? And so, um, what, like for example, on the Instagram account we feature people our community members photos and we have a hashtag and we encourage people to tag us and use our hashtag and uh and so every day someone else's picture gets featured and that's a way that we can kind of bring the community together uh and it's it's sort of the same with the with the facebook group you know i mean it's these it's it's essentially giving my listeners and my readers a place to go because they talk, they want to talk to each other. They have questions. They want to give each other advice. They want to share. And so we use Instagram to share their photos because everybody wants to share their photos. And we use the community to share advice. Like the community is strictly conversation, questions, advice about travel, um, encouraging one another to travel sooner than later, you know? And so really that whole platform is about the community now. And then Traveling Jackie is just me and whatever I want to do. <laughs> Brilliant. And uh, the Facebook community is um, 4,500 or, or so people, uh, I think, about yeah, now. Yeah, it's at 42 right now. Mm-hmm. Nice. Okay, congrats. Yeah. Thanks. Um, and what uh, you said, you know, people are asking questions. What do, what do you provide them and, and what do people really want in there? So I, I think this is really important. I have basically, I created the space. Okay. And in creating the space, I also created the mission of the group, which is super, super important. It's sort of like creating a mission for a company, like a credo, something you can always go back to if you're faced with a dilemma and say, okay, what are our values? Let's stick to this. And that will help us make our decision going forward. So like I get a ton of, people commenting in there. I mean, it's over 4,000 people, very, very active group, lots of new threads every day. And I moderate every single one of them. So the mission of the group in one sentence is that this is a place to ask travel questions, share travel advice, and ultimately encourage one another to travel the world sooner than later, period. That's it. So if, uh, for example, if a comment comes through and it doesn't fit that, then it does not get approved. So basically, like if people come in and try to share links to this new product they created, I ban them immediately, (laughs) just immediately. Because in the rules, you know, it says don't, you know, don't post links to any blog, website, flight deal, product or otherwise, unless it specifically answers a question that has been asked. Okay. And so they're more than welcome to share something that's been helpful for them as a, as an answer to a comment. But I do not allow spam. I do not allow anybody to come in and take advantage of this community. It is like a really, really safe kind of place for people to just come in. They know that they're going to, that they get good quality conversation in here because there's no spam because I moderate it very strictly. Um, And so that's what I've created is a space for them to come. And then what, and then what they get out of it is they're allowed to come and say, for example, Derek Louder milk posts. <laughs> and he's heading to Oktoberfest. I'll be in Munich September 15th or 20th. There's already somebody that says I'll be there September 16th or 18th. So you might have yourself a friend there, you know. Um, you're looking to connect with someone. Here's someone who says she's going to be there. That's awesome. Um, the next person says I'm traveling to Madrid in September for a few days. You know, what, what is a must do? What, what, what can't I miss? And there's, I don't know how many comments, 10 comments on here already. Um, people giving suggestions about where she should go in Madrid. And so basically it's, it's just, it's a really, really fast way because the community is so engaged and so active. It's a really fast way to get your travel questions answered. Um, And on the back end, this is brilliant for me, the founder, because I used to get these questions in my inbox. And so I created this (laughs) space basically to leverage everyone out there who has these questions. And I mean, it's way better to ask 4,000 people than it is to ask me, 
you know, I, I mean, for example, I've been to Madrid once for a few days, but I'm not going to have that many, you know, recommendations for Madrid. But here, all these people are chiming in from all over the world, people who've been there recently, they know, they know the city, you know, and so it's, it's like leveraging the community itself to answer their own questions. It's beautiful. It's a brilliant thing. And as long as I do my job keeping it really, really clean, then I think everybody's really happy with it. Uh, I get really good feedback about this community. So awesome. that's what it's for. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So it sounds like one of the keys is is also being available to approve uh, posts regularly and sort of keeping an eye on that. Uh, Absolutely. And I do have um, another admin who helps me approve uh, posts. And she's very good. She knows exactly what what I'm looking for. And if anything is questionable, she'll leave it for me. And sometimes I'll check and there'll be five spammy posts that she's just left in there for me to basically ban the person. Gotcha. Um, and yeah. And I mean, you don't, unless it really seems innocent and like a fluke, um, or maybe I know your name already from being in the community. Most of these people who try to spam, they're brand new members. You know, they, Mm -hmm. they just like, they somehow sneak in and then they just try and push their own page. It's like, no, that's not what this is for. This does not go with our mission. You know, you're just trying to promote yourself and I don't want you to take advantage of my community that way that I've worked pretty hard to build and keep in line this way. And I know they, they appreciate it. Cause I've, I've mentioned it a few times, you know, I'll, I'll say you guys, you know, we, we do get a lot of spam, like, please help me if you see anyone commenting. Cause like, those are the ones I don't have control over is once yeah. a thread is already published. You know, if you see someone that's being inappropriate, please report it, you know, please let me know. And that has happened. I've had people message me and say, I'm not sure about this person, you know, and they're gone just like that because you know, there's no tolerance. Like I really want this to be a clean space. Yeah. Yeah. Kudos for, for doing that. And it's, it's always great when someone sets clear boundaries. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you got to watch out people coming in too. You know, we have to, we approve everyone. I, I personally approve. I do not, I do not have my other admin do that. Um, I approve everybody who, who asks to become a member. So, you know, if you joined Facebook, like in the last week or the last 24 hours, don't even think about it because, you know, who, who, who knows that you're not a, you know, just a spam account. And, you know, usually I have to be able to see a profile picture. you got to have friends. Like I really do vet people. If you, if you're a member of like 5,000 groups, you're not getting in either because you're probably just wow. spam. So yeah, it's very, cool. it's very regulated, but that's why it works. That's why it works. So how does the Facebook group fit in with your overall business model? Um, you know, I created because I knew the people were out there because I would get the emails, um, you know, and I knew they existed. And not only did I want to help myself by answering their, their questions, having them answer their questions for them, you know, instead of having, I mean, it really, really, really has helped my inbox so much. And that is great for my productivity. Um, you know, it's, The reason I created the blog and the podcast, all that in the first place is try to answer as many questions as I can, but they still come in. And so the community has helped alleviate that. But also it's really neat to be able to kind of see a tangible, (laughs) my tangible community. And I know that Facebook does a really good job at promoting, you know, things that work on Facebook. And so my group gets, it gets promoted organically by Facebook because Facebook likes it. Mm. Um, and so a lot of these people haven't actually listened to the podcast before or read the blog, but the budget minded traveler community, like that name is so it's so I think general that people aren't going to immediately know right away that that's a blog or a podcast. But what's really cool is once they get in some of these posts in here say, you know, for example, um, I know Jackie talks a lot about the Far Point 55. That's a Osprey backpack, you know, like, what do you guys think about that? Or, um, or what was that podcast where Jackie was talking about that family that went to Peru or whatever, you know, and then people will chime in and like, and, and so people are getting a clue that it's connected to, I mean, it says also, of course, in the welcome, like in the message that's pinned to the top of the group, it, it says what the group is and where it came from. And that obviously there's a podcast and a blog and all that which is also really cool. Um, so they'll link to, you know, oh, here's that packing post where Jackie mentioned that backpack and they'll put it on there, you know? And so they are essentially also helping. They're like my, my marketing team. They're, 
they're, um, they're helping me spread the word and, uh, it's bringing traffic back to my site because all those people, this is who's, you know, who, who, this is their first touch, you know, this is their, the first point of contact with the budget minded traveler. They find out that there's a podcast and so I'll gain listeners or I'll gain readers, you know, cause they, they realize that it's more than just a community. Um, and the people who speak up about, you know, who know me and my work, you know, they're, they're only really reinforcing the, I guess the strength of the content, you know? And so that's, it's really cool. Like it's kind of a hands-off marketing machine for me as well. And it just gives, you know, people a nice place to, uh, to know that they can get their answers, their questions answered. Yeah. Uh, so, perfect. so business wise. And I do think that there, I mean, I've done, um, live events in this group, you know, like, Q and A's with me. I've done a, a, a Facebook live Q and A and people love that <laughs> because it's, cause I'm real, you know, I'm a real person behind all of this. And so they get to see me in another light if they hear me on my show or, uh, you know, read my blog and they get to see me and I'm interacting with them and they like freak out about it. It's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, Jackie responded, you know, it's like, I feel kind of like a celebrity, but it's just, it's just a, I guess an extra like foundation, like an extra cornerstone for my brand. Cool. Yeah. Do you feel like a celebrity? <laughs> I mean, no, but they make me feel like one sometimes, you know, <laughs> it's so funny. I mean, I get these comments like, oh my God, Jackie responded or like, how, wow, how Jack- do you know <laughs> when you are famous or when you become a celebrity? How will you know? Oh, well, I suppose when people stop you in the street because they recognize you, that's so weird. And it's like the coolest thing ever. But I do get, I mean, I get emails from people that, uh, you know, I get a lot of thank you emails and I respond to them or they write me on Instagram and I respond to them and you know, they, they kind of freak out. And so that, that does make me feel like a, it makes me feel pretty important, which is fun. It's really fun. But I mean, at the same time, I, I built this thing. I built the budget minded traveler from nothing and it, it is working and it's changing people's lives. And that's just a crazy cool feeling. So I guess it all just kind of goes together. Yeah. Um, you, earlier you mentioned, uh, the budget minded traveler being the SEO machine. Is that one of your areas of expertise, SEO? Um, I wouldn't really say, well, you know what? I could probably do an entire like 10 series episode podcast thing on SEO because I really do know a lot about it, but it's because I've researched it um, and I've tested things out on my own blog, but really just the the front end stuff, not like the sort of SEO that really um, like makes your website faster. I'm not that great at that one, but you know, when, when writing content and when, when putting content out there and how to build a blog post like that, um, I have learned quite a lot about, and I know it's working because I'm like number one in Google in several things. And so wow. those are, those are the, you know, keywords that those are the big posts on my site that get me the most traffic. Um, so that's why I call it an SEO machine because that's, I mean, most of my traffic is organic from organic searches from Google and that's pretty nice. Uh, yeah. Pretty, pretty decent. So, and, um, you mentioned before the show that you are going to be redesigning your site. Uh, hopefully mm-hmm. that's not secret. Um, not at all, except that I don't know if it'll, I don't know when this is going live. So, you know, it, uh, it might be done, it might be not. My not question done. is, do you do all of your own? web design work? Do you do your podcast editing? That kind of thing, technical stuff. Yeah. Um, y- yes and no. Uh, I definitely started out doing all of it myself for the first two years, probably for both things, the podcast and the, the website. Actually, I still do all my own website design. I actually might get help for this redesign, but that's yet to be determined. But the podcast, I didn't get an editor for the first, like, I think, couple of years. And now I do have one, and that's Hayden, who we both know, uh, or who yes. was on that show with us on my podcast. And he is fabulous. And I actually would like to 
offload the entire project eventually to a to a team, you know, and just kind of show up for interviews because it's a lot of work running a podcast. I'm sure you understand that. I mean, there's so much that goes into it, not just the scheduling and the recording and the actually sitting down to, you know, like, what are you going to ask during this interview and how are you going to present this and where does it fit in your show and who are you going to schedule for next one and the next one and you know and, and then you've got all the editing and the music and uploading and tagging and show notes and I mean it's so much work and then you have all of these people who are depending on you to put that show out and when you miss one they ask where is it you know so yeah, it's yeah. Just a lot of pressure and uh it's, but the thing is too, is, I mean, it's hard to like a podcast is free. You listen to it for free. And so monetizing a podcast is really difficult. Um, and so having the resources to pay for a team is, has been a major challenge for me mm -hmm. and, um, on, on both sides, you know, and that's, that's why I do most everything myself. I mean, especially when I started out, I didn't have money to pay people to build my project, like my idea, you know? And so I did it all myself. That's why I researched SEO. Like that's why I've learned how to do everything that I can do is because I didn't have a choice. Basically. <laughs> I love it. I know you're gearing up to head down to Patagonia in a bit. You've got a, you've got your, what is maybe your second trip that you're leading? Second. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Super, super exciting. Yeah, and I just just want to hear hear a little bit more about I don't know how that how that trip came to be and and how you're running it. Um, well, for me, even before I started my blog, you know, I I would try and come up with ideas of ways that I could make travel uh, make an income from travel. And I mean, I was the person that everyone I knew went to for travel advice, which is why the blog started in the first place. But one of my dreams was to guide trips, like not just guide trips, but lead people, you know, from the U S overseas and say, this is, this is how you can do it. You know, like take my hand, let's go do this. I'm going to show you what it looks like outside of U S borders, you know, and then that the, the world is a beautiful place and you know, you should go explore it. And here, here's a really easy way to do it. And I was thinking I could do all the things like I love photography. I could, I could take the photos for the trip. I could try, I could be the interpreter cause I speak Spanish, you know, I mean, I'm thinking about like taking people to Costa Rica or something that, you know, it was, it was always a dream for me. And then I went to Patagonia in the fall of 2015 for, uh, as a media delegate for the adventure travel world summit. And on that trip, to go to Torres del Paine, which is southern, southern Chile, very famous rock spires, blue lakes. You probably have seen pictures of it, but that place just changed me, just really spoke to me. And um, I ended up moving down to Argentina, Patagonia in Argentina, uh, Ar <laughs> Argentinian Patagonia, <laughs> which I hadn't even been to Argentina before, you know, but I went down to Bariloche. I lived there for three months. I went back to Torres del Paine and, you know, I decided I want to lead a trip here. This is where I want to do it, which is kind of crazy because it's sort of like shooting for the freaking moon on your first try. It's not Costa Rica. It's Patagonia. It's two days away. It's expensive. Um, it's like, it's a big, big trip. It's a massive bucket lister, you know? And, um, but anyway, I decided that's where I wanted to lead my first trip. And so sold six spots the first year, made it happen. And, um, I'm on seven so far for this year. There are 10 spots total and we're going over. So making it happen again. And that trip was beyond, my greatest expectations. It was perfect. It was flawless. It, it made people say the things that I wanted to hear them say, you know, about mm. how it was just changing their lives and opening their eyes. And, oh my gosh, I mean, it gives me chills and makes me cry to like hear these people talk about that trip because that's what I wanted to create for them. Cause I've experienced all of those things and it's, you can only write and talk about it on a podcast so much. Like the, it's up to the, it's up to the, you listener, it's up to you. You need to go <laughs> and experience this for yourself. And so basically this is me just extending a hand and saying, do this one with me. You know, Patagonia is a bucket list destination. And this year we're going to the Lake District. So it's Northern Patagonia, mm. both Chile and Argentina. Uh, yeah. So that's just been a very explorative, like just 
adventure for me because, uh, you know, it's another thing for me to learn too. I don't, I haven't done it before. It's, it, you know, it's, it's new for me, but it's exciting. And I mean, people are loving it. And so, I mean, I already have people who are marking their calendars for next year's trip, <laughs> literally. Sweet. So I think I have a good thing going here. And I mean, also, I, I'm sure you can attest to this. Anybody understands that when a place moves you so much, it's so fun to go visit that place with a person who connects with it so much. And that's me and like, and Patagonia, you know? And so I, I mean, I glow, I get so excited when I talk about Patagonia. And so getting to bring people to my special place is like, it just, it's a dream for me. It's amazing. And so that's sort of why that's happening and it's working. (laughs) So I'm going to keep doing it as long as it's working. Let me get your, let me get your advice. Uh, so I actually took the, took that idea. Uh, I really liked it. And, uh, I have another friend who's leading adventure trips. Uh, I think he, he might be the episode coming out right before you, if I have my schedule correct. So yeah, a lot of adventurers leading trips. And so I was like, I, I can do that. I'm going to do that. Um, so I, on a whim created this trip in, another bucket list destination that's the ozarks of southern missouri Mm -hmm. and um (laughs) yeah so so it's a week-long trip in in a couple of months in october october 13th friday the 13th but uh, i've got three spots uh filled out of eight and so far i've just asked three people do you want to come and they said yeah but my question is Mm -hmm. is that how you fill your trip you just ask people that you want to come or how did how are you getting people to come? Mm, okay. So one thing I have learned is that it takes a lot, it takes a huge pool of people for even just a few to say yes, you know? And so like, for example, when I was teaching Spanish years ago, I really wanted to take my Spanish class, which was like 12 people, to Cuba. I'm like, why wouldn't you guys want to go to Cuba with me? Like, let's go do like an educational tour in Cuba. Like that was an idea that I had. And not a single person wanted, I mean, I didn't really plan it and say, here's the date, but I definitely threw it out to them. And I said, would you guys want to do this with me? Like, could we do this? And no one wanted to commit to it. (laughs) I'm like, well, okay. I only asked 12 people that I, (laughs) that would be relevant for that trip. And not a single one said yes. You know, now I have thousands and thousands and thousands of people in my audience and I'm still only at seven sold for Patagonia right now. And so it's just hard to get people to say yes. I mean, those, those, those people that the, the trip talks to speaks to, they are, you don't even have to sell them. They sell themselves. It's easy. They, it's a bucket list destination. They want to go. They've been wanting to go. I'm the person that they want to go with done. You know, they can, they can find the money. They can find the time off work. That's all it takes. That's not everyone. That's the bottom line. And so like, for example, this year I have one repeat from last year, which is, Oh, cool. I feel like that's a huge compliment, you know? Uh, and I did not know her before, they, she's just a member of my audience, you know, and I just put it out to my audience. I put it on my podcast. Um, I put it on the blog, I put it on Instagram and that's how people are signing up. So this one girl is the only one that I've met before of all the people that are signed up this year. They're all, they're all just, you know, podcast listeners, blog readers. They just, they know that it's happening and that it's out there. I just try and put it out there as best I can. Yeah. Okay, cool. That's, uh, I don't have secrets for that yet, though. I kind of wish that I did. I thought this trip would sell out this year. And, you know, it still might. Uh, but I kind of thought it would be sold out by now. And it's not. And so, you know, you just mm. never know. I mean, it is a big destination. Flights are not included. And Patagonia is expensive. And so I think maybe if I did do, you know, something to Costa Rica, that would probably sell out really pretty quickly. Because it would be cheaper. It's closer. It's not as scary is not as far away you know patagonia is kind of a a big yeah a big commitment so um you know but that's how i work i just shoot for the stars so (laughs) we're going you know we're going even if we have seven and me and we have a male uh, photographer and a guide so it'll be a good group of us anyway yeah so everyone in the group is uh women so far so far which is incredible and i think that says a lot about my my audience and the, the influence of traveling Jackie actually, Mm. I mean, this, this trip is not necessarily for the budget minded traveler audience. Like that's geared towards 
independent travelers, not necessarily group travel, you know, and uh, people who want to figure out how to do trips on their own for the best value. And this is basically like, you know, we're not camping, we're staying in lodges and we're hiking and we're cooking things and we're going to drink beer. And this is like personal exploration in an incredible place. And it's it's not necessarily for the budget minded traveler community. That's why I also think if I had like a, a cheaper trip, it would, it would just sell like hotcakes, but this is kind of a big one. So yeah, you, could do you gotta one find like, those special people in your audience, you know, who this really speaks to. You could, you could do one for a budget minded traveler where you're like, okay, we're all going to hitchhike together across the country. <laughs> Yeah. The, the that goal would be is, such a mess. The oh goal is gosh. we we need to end up with more money than we started with somehow. Oh my gosh, that's <laughs> just too funny. That's too funny. Uh yeah. speaking of beer, you mm-hmm. you just pulled up my post about heading to Oktoberfest. Um, <laughs> yeah. But it sounds like you have been there before? Oh yeah, four times. Four times. Okay, what do yeah, I need to I know? I have a podcast about it actually. Oh, just listen to the podcast. It's probably somewhere around number 14. It was early that I that I did that one on on Oktoberfest, but are you really planning to go to Oktoberfest like 4 days or what days? How many yeah, days? Yeah, yeah, 5 days. <laughs> oh my gosh, good luck. <laughs> I'm laughing because one day at Oktoberfest is plenty. <laughs> But if you want to go all week, you know, go ahead. It's super fun. Um, So the event, as you know, is, well, I don't know if you know, but it is a free event. You can go into any of the tents um, and then you just pay for your beer and your food. Stein, the like one beer, um, a liter of beer is about 10 euros. And these women carry like 10 of them at a time. It's so crazy. They're huge. But I would recommend getting there early enough that especially okay this really depends on the weather if it's rainy you got to be like the first one there otherwise the tents are going to fill and you're going to get shut out and have to stay outside in the rain because they fill and they you know can't take any more and so that does happen but it mainly happens in rain or on october 3rd which you're not going to be there on october 3rd which is unity day it's a holiday and also on weekends so weekends tend to be very busy check the schedule I think it's like Oktoberfest.de or something. You can check the schedule and see if during your dates they have like family day or anything specific like business day or, you know, something going on um, because you may want to try and, you know, take a claim on a spot. Yeah, right. Um, uh, You know, in a a tent before before it gets too crowded. But generally speaking, midweek on a nice day at Oktoberfest, you're not going to have any problems going in and out of any tent at all. Like there will be, it'll be open. You know, they won't shut because they have too many people inside. So, but just keep that in mind, weather and holidays uh, can play it. I'm so excited. I, yeah. um, I mean, I'm actually at the very end of a seven day fast. Uh, I haven't had anything to eat in seven days and I've been dreaming of burgers and also beer chicken and pickles from a bucket and radishes and pretzels and oh man okay here's another tip are you gonna bring are you gonna wear the traditional clothing or do you plan to get Uh, is the traditional uh, clothing flip-flops no um if you do want to get later hosen go downtown munich go into cna do you know cna it's like a department store okay they're european but they have the best deals because they i mean they have good enough stuff but it's it's actually really affordable because a real like real lederhosen is hundreds uh, hundreds of euros like you spend two or three hundred euros on like a real setup but you can get them at cna for like 40 euros so if you're interested in in dressing up um, like i have a dirndl and i got it at cna and it was probably eh, there's how much was it i don't know 50 euros it's like a 60. for so for guys there's a, there's an outfit as well. Yeah, lederhosen. The, that's that's like a overalls it's kind like of. It's like the suede overalls, yeah. But you can really go all out with it because you can get the socks and the shoes and the hat with like the feather and then the wooden spoon that goes in the pocket and the <laughs> shirt and the collar, like all the things. And so <laughs> it's fun. It's really fun. Um, do you know, most, are most people... I've also been four times, and that's why I own a Dirndl. Okay. Most people just go and, you know, you you don't have to dress up. You can wear whatever you want. Okay, um, but I'll consider it. 
that's definitely it. Here's another really good tip for Oktoberfest. As soon as you get there, meaning before you have consumed alcohol <laughs> with your party, whoever you're with, uh, assuming you're not solo, de- decide on a meeting point as a just in case scenario. Like make sure everyone knows what the meeting point is that way. If, and when you get separated later, when you're drunk or whatever, you know exactly where to go to get back to, to find people because sometimes phones stop working or you don't have service or, you know, and so there's, and there's a ton of people there. You can lose people really, really easily. And so decide on a meeting point (laughs) as soon as you get there. Okay. That's really good. Uh, I'm just, I'm going to need, I'm going to need a buddy. We use the buddy system. Yeah. Buddy system or, I mean, honestly, it doesn't take much to even get separated at the bathroom. And so, you know, it, it just, yeah, just have a meeting point just in case. Um, definitely try the food. Okay. Try the food. In the tents. Try, eat all the food. Eat all the food. Like basically you're going to eat and drink and ride roller coasters and it's... Roller and coasters. This is amazing. I know nothing about this. It's, this is getting more and more Oh amazing. my gosh. It's like a fair for adults, like Disneyland for adults with beer. Yeah, that's like what Oktoberfest is. It's massive. There is always um, a roller coaster that represents when the Olympics was in Munich. It has five loops, you know, for the five rings of the Olympics. Yeah. Uh, so that one's fun. The Ferris wheel is huge. Do it at night because it's really, really beautiful when everything's lit up. These are all expensive. It's like eight euros or 10 euros for one ride. You know, like you can definitely spend. But then there's also like games that, you know, you can like go shooting and um, I don't know, all sorts of like fair games and stuff like carnival style. So yeah. How about that? This is, this is something that I just put in my bucket list. Cause I was like, that sounds fun. <laughs> and they made a movie about it. Uh, you know, what was that beer? Uh, oh, beer fest. Beer fest. <laughs> yeah. You could watch beer fest before you go. Oh. Suggested reading. <laughs> <laughs> watch beer fest. Good. That's one of my favorite comedies ever. So <laughs> <I'm>, yeah. <laughs> Good. Oh, this but is perfect. It's definitely, it's not Oktoberfest at all, but it's a hilarious movie anyway. I could go on about Oktoberfest. Uh, I, <laughs> and on and on and on. I, I, will do a, I will also do an episode about Oktoberfest, and then I will compare your episode. I'll listen to your episode, and then I'll compare my notes. I don't even remember what my episode was about. It was so long ago. Back, and so I probably have even more to add since then. Yeah, maybe this will be something Just, I do, do regularly. Who knows? Just Maybe I'll be see ready there to be silly and sing songs and, you know, make friends. I think it's the most fun. And I think that's probably because of age, like demographic. It also has the reputation for being the, the craziest because it's like full of Aussies and Kiwis. and But it's so much fun. I mean, and it's still, no matter where you go, Oktoberfest is traditional. It's a tradition. It's a German tradition. So, so you're always going to find friends there as well. And then you also have people that... You know, just make friends. It's fun. Yeah, perfect. Have a good time. Perfect. Take care of yourself. <laughs> um, let's see. We've got we've got a few minutes left. Uh, just popcorn out some questions to you. How do you train for your running while you travel? Hmm. Well, I try and run no matter where I am. So, like when I lived in Argentina, I just kind of found a route that I could that I could run often you know, and then I times a week and same when I was living in Mexico, I just ran along the beach. Um, and I, it's just something that I do. I just need to run. It centers me. And it also thing that can stay consistent as my surroundings are constantly changing. You know, I mean, it's, it's hard to be on the road all the time. And so you need to have those things you can turn to that, that ground you, that center you. And running is one of those things for me. And, uh, so that's why I try Wherever I am, I just, you know, find a, find a route and maybe stick with it once I know it or, and I use the Strava app too, because it, uh, it includes the map of where you're running. You know, you can, you can record your run. So you can't, you, if you have the app, like you can't get lost because you can always turn back as long as your phone doesn't die, which that did happen to me once in Hamburg, it was too cold and it froze and it turned off. And I was like, Oh crap. Like I have to find my way back to where I'm staying without a map. It's so weird when you don't have your phone these days, but yeah, Strava keeps Strava. I feel like is, it helps to keep me safe while I'm running. And then I just kind of figure it out. So it's important to me. Yeah. 
I, I do I, I do some running. I also have a bike, luckily, in Europe this summer, which is amazing. Uh, and I can really explore on that. Super, super nice to have. Mm-hmm. What is something that is still outside your comfort zone? Mm. Whitewater rafting. <laughs> ah, you're not a water person. That's right. I'm not a water person, and I'm not really a heights person either. Uh, I'm just really brave. And so I face my fears a lot. It always turns into a good, good story because it terrifies me. So I, I end up writing a lot about heights and water because those are two things that just really, ugh, they really. <laughs> Would you get ever me out of my kayak country. down Mount Everest? Did you just say kayak down Mount Everest? Yeah, global warming. I'm sure there'd be great white water there. Oh, God. <laughs> Actually, I don't think I would go, even just hiking, I don't think I would go past base camp. Base camp is at like 17.5 or something. It's way up there. And A, I don't know how I would do with breathing at that level, but mountaineering that interests me in the least because another thing that gets me out of my comfort zone is I cannot, I don't like it. Like I am that girl who chases the sun all around the world. And so... Winter's not my scene necessarily, like snowstorms, being on the road, that, but just like the whole elements, that's not for me. <laughs> not for me. Gotcha. Yeah. You know, it's funny. Nomads are always chasing, chasing sun and I'm like, I can't wait to go skiing again. Can't, haven't, haven't skied in years. So and I just went skiing on the 4th of July in Tahoe. That's actually. amazing. <laughs> that's so cool. Yeah. That's where Why I grew not? up. I'm very comfortable on skis. I just don't really ski much anymore. Yeah. How do you find sponsors? For what? Uh, so what I think I think you you have like a Brooks and a um, mm-hmm. Osprey mm-hmm. sponsorship. Okay. Yeah, and these um, technically there's no like those are not monetary, and so maybe they shouldn't be. I'm kind of like an ambassador for them, but people even have definitions around that, so that's kind of tricky, but. I reached out to them. I the first one that I ever had was the most random. I was happened to be living on the beach in Baja and this crew came down and stayed in the house next to us and they happened to be from Carve Design all week and Carve Designs are they are the ones who provide me my swimsuits and some of my some of my hiking gear. They're like athletic wear for women. That was very random by chance. And when that came together and they, you know, wanted me to be an ambassador for them, that's kind of where I thought, well, if I can do it for them, I can do it for others. And so I actually reached out to the I use and that I love and um, found basically the right person to talk to and sort of just pitched it to them. I well, not just sort of pitched. I actually had a very good pitch put together that was super impressive. And even when I, when I sent it to Osprey, he called me within like half an hour of sending it. He was like, that was really good. We need to talk. <laughs> so, you know, I, I worked for it, but um, I did my research and I put together something that for the brand to read it about what I was doing and, and how we could work uh, is getting those monetary sponsorships. <laughs> yeah. A lot of stuff we do in this in this independent, you know, online business world is uh, it, it takes a long time before you can see the pretty pennies come in. It takes a lot of effort. Anybody who thinks that this can be done overnight, <laughs> you can just go back home. <laughs> um, is there anything that I haven't asked you about yet that uh, you want to mention? Um, so I actually just launched my first online course in June. And so I'm pretty excited about that. That's called the Budget Minded Traveler Blueprint. And it essentially takes the most practical tips from the podcast and the blog and everything I've ever done, uh, including some stories and product reviews and uh, packing lists and puts it all into one place. And it's sort of like a launching pad for for planning your own trip. And so I'm pretty excited about that. That is, uh, You can find it at thebudgetmindedtraveler.com slash blueprint. And uh, so yeah, for current events, that's, that's what I'm excited about right now. <laughs> Brilliant. And final question for you. Mm-hmm. You have a, uh, a microphone, the one in front of you. Um, mm-hmm. this, is, this is a hypothetical time. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> you, you're, you're connected to everyone in the world. They can hear you. And you um, have 60 seconds to talk to them. They'll understand you, you know, whatever language they speak. And... Yeah, all, you know, women, children, everyone, they can hear you. What do you want 
to say to them? I think my 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 whole message really is, you know, if 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 you don't prioritize your life, someone else will. That's uh, from Essentialism, the book, which should be required reading for all humans. But you know, if something is important to you, like travel or um, whatever it is, uh, if if it means leaving a house or leaving a job or starting a, a job or buying a house, you know, whatever your priorities are, those are the most important things in your life. And you need to figure that out. And for a lot of people, it's travel. And that's what I want to help you with. And so if that's important to you, find a way to do it because you're only going to regret not, not doing the things that are most important to you. This is your, your life and you need to take the reins. It feels good to be the captain of Ship, you know, listening to yourself. And uh, so I would just encourage you to build your life by design, not default. And, you know, take control and make those things happen that you want to make happen, no matter what they are, because those ideas are speaking to you for a reason. So I think that's what I have to say. Brilliant. It's perfect. Jackie, where can people find you online? Um, you can find me across social media at Traveling Jackie uh, with one L because that's the American spelling. And then the budgetmindedtraveler.com or travelingjackie.com. Those are my two blogs. So that's where you can find me. Thanks so much for coming on the show. Great to connect with you again. Thanks for having me. Definitely. We'll have to do it again. Good luck at Oktoberfest. <laughs> Thank you. All right. See you, Derek. Okay. Bye-bye. All right, another great episode with Jackie Nurse. If you enjoyed the episode and learned something, make sure you tell Jackie what you learned from her uh, on Instagram. She is very active on there as well, as am I. And if you if you want to join the, the budget-minded traveler community and get a lot of travel connections, I'm in that group as well. It's a great group to join. We've talked about it in the episode, so you know what it's about a little bit. And if you are thinking, I it's really time for me to do some budget-minded long-term traveling and you want to know how to fund it you want to start a business so you can travel full-time or travel whenever you feel like it then it's probably time for us to chat so i'm offering you the listener of this podcast the chance to have a free business strategy session so we can figure out exactly what your goals are with travel with business and creating freedom and see if it might be a good fit for us to work together that's all for today's episode now it's your turn to go out there and be adventurous.